is up and welcome back to 24 Minutes of A24, the podcast that takes a look at the A24 library 24 minutes at a time. I'm Ethan Simi. And I'm Ben Lawhorn. This week on the pod, we're taking a listener recommendation as we go out into the world and talk about 2015's Academy Award winning film, Room. A little boy is held captive in a room with his mother since birth, so he has never known the world outside. This is a movie... Now, I guess you could say deep in the 24 catalog. It's it's nine years old now, which yeah. is startling. Um, but as you mentioned, a listener recommendation. Uh, Eli hit us up because we didn't know if we were going to get to cover Janet Planet or not, which I guess is available for pre-order on VOD. I don't know what that means. We don't have it is what <laughs> have, that means. Uh, have no idea. <laughs> um, we don't know. So Eli was like, you guys should cover Room. And we're like, yes, we will do that. So. If you ever want us to cover anything, just holler at us and we'll probably do it. Uh, and here we are talking about Room. Yeah. Came out in 2015, starring Brie Larson, who won an Academy Award for uh, Academy Award for it. We'll dive into it. Ben, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm coming off a emotional defeat in our movie <laughs> draft pod that we did recently. Uh, I'm still coming to terms with it. But other than that, uh, I'm doing okay. How about you? No, I'm glad to catch you in an emotionally vacant space. Um, I feel like this is a great movie to do that for. This is the movie for that, for sure. (laughs) I'm feeling great. Honestly, I'm coming off of an emotional high of that recording. Um, We we just got done recording the Movie Villains draft on the Movie Draft podcast, which will be out a few days after this pod comes out, I believe. Um, And I feel like I won. So... I also am in a uh, juxtaposed emotionally va- vacant space. Um, mm. We'll see how we go about this conversation for Room. Like I said, Janet Planet, not available on VOD. I have two other housekeeping things. So yeah. today um, we got news today that we were recording. Got news um, that Hel- Helena Rain's new movie, uh, the director of Bodies, 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 which both of us had a really good time with. I find myself thinking about that movie a lot recently. Yeah, uh, that movie is great. And it you know gets out there what the struggle is of being a podcaster and more people need to know that it's really the only movie i've ever feel i've ever felt completely seen while yeah. watching uh i was like that's me on that screen uh, i am rachel senate um so helena rain's next movie is going to premiere at venice the venice film festival this year it is an erotic thriller titled baby girl starring nicole kidman and harris dickinson um that's like sounds fantastic i don't know like what else to say it sounds phenomenal and if it's premiering at venice i feel like it's good uh the venice lineup this year i wouldn't say it's like crazy stacked but it has some really big heavy hitters it's got it's got uh queer it's got baby girl joker fully ado is premiering there as well so like i feel like it's got a, this kind of big swath of what are sure to be really good movies yeah and i'm curious if this will be one of them or not i am a little cold on nicole kidman overall oh really um so it's not like a huge draw for me that she's in this but uh we will see we'll see how it goes i think i was like i was a little cold on nicole kidman as well and then the other night i watched eyes wide shut and i was like oh wow she's phenomenal uh so i turned around pretty fast but you know eyes wide shut it's kind of my movie so that that was a pretty easy task to turn around on um the other piece of news that we got is Heretic, the new A24 horror Mm -hmm. film starring Hugh Grant, will have its world premiere in September at TIFF, a film festival that I am going to. Um, So I just want you to know, Ben, I will hopefully be at the world premiere of Heretic. I hope you are. Um, As someone who was raised Mormon, I'm very excited to watch this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to be an interesting experience, to say the least. But I, yeah, fingers crossed you're able to be there. Yeah, I hope so as well. I don't really know like how... The process works for for TIFF. I have a lot of friends that are going to help guide me along the way uh, and make sure that I do get to the screening. But I'm genuinely excited for Heretic. I think it looks really scary. Like, I, I think it looks genuinely interesting. And Hugh Grant as a, I don't know, Jigsaw-esque murderer, I think sounds fantastic to me. Do you have a question ready for Hugh if you get to talk to him on the red carpet? Absolutely not. What should I do? What should I do? I get, it's got to be pod oriented, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, how do I get him on the show? That's the question. 
that's what you, that's what you need to ask him. It's like, what are you up to? Um, <laughs> ask him what his like favorite part about being an Oompa Loompa was in Wonka. Since you Jesus love that movie, fucking Christ, I would rather die. I would, <laughs> I would literally talk rather about that. talk to anybody else on the planet about anything at all. <laughs> um, or maybe you need I, to watch Paddington Two and ask him about that. I mean, realistically, I should ask him like, hey. How big was the bag for being an Oompa Loompa? Because you didn't look like you had a great time and it must have been a lot of money. Yeah, you must have got, got that check for sure. <laughs> got that check. Um, Yeah, so I'm excited for Heretic. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, you ready to talk about Room? Uh, Yeah, as ready as I can be. Okay, yeah. So as ready as I can be, I think is a good way to describe this. Um, Like I said, came out 2015, directed by Lenny, uh, Lenny Abrahamson. <laughs> Uh, who has directed a couple other TV shows uh, and things that are like emotionally traumatizing. So there's that. Stars Brie Larson, Jacob Tremblay, and William H. Macy. I wanted to put it on the list. We're going to circle back to the William Gotta H. Macy it. of everything, even though he's only in like two scenes in this movie. Um, this movie got four Oscar nominations. Of course, nominated Brie Larson for Best Actress. Um, it was also nominated for Best Picture. Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Was this your first time watching Room, or had you seen it before this pod? I had seen it before. Um, I think I watched it twice before. So twice? This is my, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. This is my third viewing um, of Room, and yeah, it's still, it still hits. <laughs> you know, even on the third viewing, it still kind of hits. Um, very impactful, and... I don't know. It's it's weird. It's a weird movie to say that you liked. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's effective and uh very well made. Yes. Um, I'm with you. I think it is a strange movie to say that you like, no, I love this movie. I love Room. Um, it's exceptionally emotionally traumatizing. Like it is, I don't think it's designed to be a movie to say like that you liked. I think it's just designed to be really, really effective. And I kind of want to dive into that the more that we talk about the movie because it definitely influenced my uh, kind of consumption of the film mm-hmm. of like feeling maybe a little too heavily emotionally manipulated. Um, I think it's a good movie. I think it's got a wonderful score. I think, of course, yeah. it has an Academy Award winning uh, acting going on here. I just it's just like not for me um, is what I will say. Um, so I think I respect it more than I like it. And we'll we'll get into that a little bit. Um, did Brie Larson deserve to win the Oscar for this? She was up against Kate Blanchett for Carol, Charlotte Rampling for 45 years, Saoirse Ronan for Brooklyn, and Jennifer Lawrence for Joy. When I wrote this down in the notes, I was like, holy shit. Like we that that was like that was a cohort of actresses, you know, like mm-hmm. that was a solid five. Yeah, that's a that was a good uh nomination grouping with them i've only seen joy in brooklyn i haven't seen carol um i've only heard good things about carol so mm-hmm. i could see kate blanchett having won that sir show was great in brooklyn joy i didn't i didn't love that movie um i have not seen 45 years but brie larson i mean for what would you say her usage is in this like 85 percent of the movie she's in 90 yeah. percent of the movie like yep. She does an amazing job. Um, there's so much that she has to convey just from like the stress with the child to, you know, what it's like to get out after that long and like readjust back into regular life. Like mm-hmm. she's, she's shown a real range of emotions here and I think she does a wonderful job. So I, I've had no problems with her win. Yeah. I, as someone who has not seen any of the other films, I think she deserved it. Um, that's where yeah. I, that's where I stand on that one. Um, so this movie, this was my first time watching this as opposed to you and your your third time seeing this movie. Um, I had only heard about it. I'd kind of like put it off because I had heard how um, emotionally impacting it is and how it's like you kind of got to be in the right headspace. So the last few days leading up to this recording, I was like, okay, I got to watch Room. Like I got, I got to get around to it. I got to get in the right headspace for it. And um, one night I was not. And so I, I watched a different movie. And then the next night I was like, okay, I only have like one more night before we pod. And I was like, well, I don't think I'm in the right headspace for room. So I watched Logan <laughs> instead so I could prepare for Deadpool and Wolverine. And then the final night, I was like, okay, actually this afternoon, I was like, okay, we, we pod in like six hours. I have to watch room. <laughs> and so that might clue you in a little bit as to like um, my emotional stance on this movie. We got an hour through it. And of course, we're going we're gonna to spoil this film. 
an hour through the movie, they escape the room. Joy and Jack escape the room. I was legitimately concerned that the movie was going to take a pretty big nosedive after that because I was like, what are we going to do? Like, what are we doing for the next hour? Like, I thought yeah. we were, I thought that was the going to be the final 10 minutes of the movie. So to its credit, I guess like kind of defies expectations a little bit of like, Hey, we're only halfway through. They escaped the room and now we get to experience the other side of the coin, which I did think was pretty cool about the film. Yeah. It was a surprise the first time I saw that. Cause I just assumed it was, 95% taking place in the room. And then yeah. the escape is like our final, you know, set piece here. It's like, okay, they get out and they're free and movies over. So for it to happen almost exactly halfway through the film, it's like, Oh shit. Okay. We're going to be with them then while they're adjusting and getting, well, while she's getting back to her regular life and he's learning about things for the very first time and experiencing things for the first time. Um, I think this film does a great job of doing that kind of POV um, yeah. where we get to see what it's like for him to see all these things. Like, what would you think the power lines look like as you're looking at the sky? You've never really seen the sky, you know, um, the trains, like all that kind of stuff. I think they do a really good job of being like, of showing what it would be from Jack's perspective. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it works. I, th I think it works. I think it's very well done. Um, I, I don't know. I'm glad. I'm glad that we watched. I'm glad it got recommended. Yeah, I'm also glad that it got it got recommended. So, uh, I shout out to Eli. I I appreciate it. It's one kind of one of the glaring like a twenty four ones that I hadn't seen. Um, I love the POV that you mentioned that we get. I think there's definitely some like unique storytelling ability to this movie, and I think it gets a little bit more morally gray than I anticipated mm -hmm. it to get. Um, we'll we'll talk about it when we get to true cinema, but especially towards the end. Um, when Joy is, is getting interviewed um, and having to come to grips with like, did you maybe not think of alternative solutions? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting thing that to me, kind of, it just feels a little yucky to like insert that into this movie um, when it's so inherently like a positive story of like, they did it, they escaped, yeah. they they fled their captor and now they can hopefully try to go on and, live normal lives. Um, but with Brie Larson being so much of the movie, um, I think she does a fantastic job. We're going to talk about Brie Larson when we get to the A1 act, but I, I watched this and I was like, it's like, man, Brie Larson used to, used to be it, you know, like what? It's just, it's a bummer. It's just like what got eaten up by the IP machine. Listen, those paychecks are out there and sometimes <laughs> you just got to take it. I don't, I don't blame her. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's definitely plenty of early, artsy stuff, great performances, short term 12, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it is, it, it can be a bummer to just see her being stuck in the, the MCU machine as much as I enjoyed, uh, the Marvels and Captain Marvel and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Tough beat for Brie. Um, okay. Should we do true cinema? Talk about the movie as we go. Let's do it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, let's, start with the first time that we see old Nick uh, in in room. So, of course, we're introduced to Joy and Jack, the mother and the son, who live in, in this room. And I thought we did get a pretty good introduction. Um, I thought the pace was unique for this movie of, like, how do you convey, like, they've lived in this room for seven years. How do you convey yeah. that in seven minutes, right? Like, how do you get that across? Did a pretty good job of it. Um, and I could see you know, from a storytelling perspective of like, okay, an hour in, we have to get out of the room because we can only do so much in, in the room. Um, and then we kind of get this understanding of old Nick and we get references to old Nick, old Nick comes over. And the very first time he comes over, um, we see through the POV of Jack from the closet, uh, from the wardrobe. And we don't see anything other than old Nick, like just taking off his pants and then getting into bed. And we hear like, creaking and moaning um absolutely like great but terrible way to start this movie yeah uh, i mean i feel like we're gonna say it over and over but like so much of the storytelling is effective and affecting mm -hmm. um where they just without showing us a lot of stuff um we see what's implied and you realize like oh she's been putting up with this for seven years like yeah. when you when that stuff you know 
comes to the realization. It's like, holy shit, this is kind of gnarly. Um, I, I like that we see old Nick, I guess, you know, cause I, I think they also could have done the thing where like he's faceless the whole time and we don't really yeah, know, yeah. Him, but I do like that. They, they show us who old Nick is. Um, and we to see some of his personality and yeah, he's just like a major creep. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's the worst. <laughs> he's yeah. awful, but, uh, it's interesting to see how, um, joy handles old Nick, it, you know, and just like does what she, he thinks needs to be done just so they can get back to the, the safety of being alone. Yeah. It's, it's kind of wild. Cause one of the first times we interact with him, he's like, I, I grapes were too expensive. So I got you guys canned pears instead. And it's like, Oh my God, like this is full fledged captive. Like they are, they're a hundred percent prisoners. Yeah. Um, of course, like the questions of logistics, uh, like can't, can't be entirely ignored, at least on my part of like, how would you not peek to try to figure out what the code is or like, you know, but I do think the movie goes down a good road of offering um, explanations of why things are the way that they are. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, we get the the story of the first time that Joy tries to escape. That's why her wrist is sore now and it's bruised. Uh, it's because she got caught and all of those things. So I think we get a good kind of balance of that, of answering those questions. Uh, and then old Nick, like offers some candy to Jack because he realizes that Jack is awake in the closet. Old Nick, um, he's just like, he just like kidnaps people and keeps them prisoner. Like that's his thing, right? He doesn't have like any ulterior motive or anything. Yeah. I mean, has, do you think he's done this before or is this that's his a great first question. victim? That's a great question. Yeah. I feel, I feel like your first victim would not be one that you have a child with and keep for seven years. That seems like an advanced level of prisoner keeping. Yeah. That's, that's like major league. That's not, that's <laughs> not, not playing in the minors or anything right, like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's major league kidnapping. I, that's, I can see that for sure. That's contract material. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I am curious if he's, if he's done this before, like, you know, I, I think it's interesting to have this conversation and talk about a movie like room that is so inherently like single source of like, mm-hmm. this is it this is the story and say like, well, you know, how did old Nick build this? Like, how long has he been this way? Did he have people prior? Like, I do think that's part of the intrigue of it. Uh, and the fact that we really only get old Nick for the first half of the movie or less really Mm. the first 45 minutes, um, is an interesting part of the narrative. Um, the power cut, I wanted to bring up the power cut because this comes after, um, basically old Nick meets Jack and Joy had tried to pretty much save Jack and say, you know, not have old Nick interact with him at all. Right. Um, and then the next day they wake up and their power is cut really cold. Uh, I thought it was a cute way to introduce the cold of, of Jack saying like, look, Ma, I'm a dragon. Um, and I think for me, that's part of why I'll never watch this movie again is because like I have a six year old daughter. Jack is five years old and I just can't, I can't stomach the reality portion of this yeah and the way that jack is played by jacob tremblay with such innocence and like true child wonder juxtaposed against like the horrific acts that are happening is remarkably impressive i honestly thought that he got rec- got nominated for this film like the after watching this performance I'm like oh yeah, yeah he must have been nominated for this but like i'm surprised that he wasn't because he does give such an amazing performance like you said, just the curiosity of this, of being a child. Yeah. Um, but even the confusion, you know, when she gets to a point where she's uh, telling him the truth about like what's on the other side of the wall, you know, or all that. It's like, are you lying to me? You know, or what do you say? Are you, are you kidding me? I forget what exactly what the phrase is, but yeah. Um, yeah. Just like the screaming, the emotion, just the things you get from a kid, but it's just amplified given these tight quarters, literally. I think it is a really interesting thing to look at Brie Larson um, and, and vice versa, but Brie Larson being able to play against Jacob Tremblay, who so obviously is like a core is like being a child is, Mm -hmm. is like is told to act like a child. So the way that Jack is screaming and yelling and saying, pants, you know, liar, liar, pants on fire. And I don't want to do this. And I hate you. Like those are real things. Like that is that 
that's a real emotional outburst from a child that that my daughter acts like sometimes. So like, mm-hmm. I get it. And to think about having to live in that room is crazy. Having to think about how to entertain your child in that room on a daily basis is even crazier. So, um, wild situation. Um, it's a lot of door of the explorer. It's a lot. It's a lot of door of the explorer for sure. Uh, you mentioned Joy telling the story of um, basically like who she used to be and how she got here and telling the reality to Jack, Jack not believing her and using that as a springboard to get Jack sick and try to get out of the room. Um, I thought this was spaced out quite well in terms of like how long we sit with being in the room and then we start to do things mm-hmm. to try to get out of the room. Uh, and that was a that was a tough watch because um, she's like making herself vomit to make him smell like sick and it's like, Damn, like this is desperate as hell. And yeah, but I mean, it it works for the most part, you know, um, hearing him complain as she's like making him hot, you know, yep. like, so, so he's got like the rosy cheeks and all that kind of stuff. Like they play so well off of each other. This movie just really, it, it thinks so, it feels like it's thought of everything yeah. with the soundproofing on the ceiling with like the toilet lid missing. Cause we find that out from the story beforehand. Um, and like you said, to the point of her, even just like making herself throw up so that, you know, it's, it, it can sell that the kid is actually sick because you, I imagine she's tried something like this before, whether it's just herself, you know, and yeah. the guy didn't believe her. So it's like, she understands the limits that she has to go to, to maybe get old Nick to believe what's happening here. So um, yeah, it just feels like they've, they've thought of everything. So is old Nick's whole reason for doing this just, just to like have a prisoner to sleep with? Like, is that like the, because it doesn't seem like there's any end game for old Nick here. Like he's just totally content coming down there every, every night, every whatever, and yeah. just sleeping with her and getting, buying them supplies and stuff. He does get laid off. He's been laid off for six months. I think is an interesting nugget that mm-hmm. we, we never come back around. I don't know if we need to come back around to it, but it, you know, it just kind of like hangs out there. Um, I don't know. Just kind of a weird guy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I don't know what his end game was, you know, of just like right. kidnapping this high school girl. And then, yeah, now you just have this 24 year old with a child in your shed. Like what, what was the What's thought your, process? Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, um, Okay, next on the list is Jack playing dead, getting outside, leading us to Jack's escape. Uh, Mm -hmm. And again, tough watch because the kid is like, I don't want to do this. You're scaring me. This is like the worst. And Joy obviously knows like we have to do this. This is the only shot we have. Mm -hmm. Um, And this comes after Jack is starting to understand like the differences of of what a TV can offer. Like those Mm -hmm. are real people on the other side of that. And there's a world out there. He can be, he's finally old enough to like maybe grasp that idea. Um, I know it worked. I know Jack escaped. So maybe put put that to the side for a second. Good idea, bad idea to have Jack fake a death. I was worried. I thought a lot of things could not go the way that Joy had wanted them to. Bad idea. Jack ends up dead, gone, never sees her again. Like, I just felt like there were too many loose ends in this plan. Yeah, anytime your plan hinges on like a five-year-old that just can't be good, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, even and again, like you said, it, it works. We know that. But there's times when like he's just like looking up outside the rug and what's going on. I was like, dude, if this guy thought to look inside here and saw you looking You're out toast. there, like you can't do that, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it works. But I think that just kind of speaks to the desperate measure hmm. of, you know, their their situation. It's just like, yeah, he might die, but it's like, if not, then we're just going to die in here. So we have to like try, you have to do something. So, um, yeah, risky, risky move. But I do love almost like the montage of training that we get. Okay. Roll, roll, roll. Like all that kind of stuff, like really yeah. showing, like, we're going to get this. So you know exactly what to do. Like the truck's going to come to a stop. That's when you get out. Like I, I really enjoyed all that. Brie Larson, pretty good actor here. I will say a uh, pretty, pretty solid turn in for her. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we get Jack's escape. Now, this is my biggest qualm with the movie, and I know this is a logistical issue, um, and I and I know people listening might just say, you know, it just 
it is what it is. You just need to let it be. Um, I can't do that. It's impossible. So Jack escapes. We finally get we get to it. And I have two big problems with this. So number one, he hops out of the car uh, and he is able to basically run into a person. Old Nick is after Jack trying to like recapture him, having a conversation with this person who is obviously on to on to old Nick and Jack is trying to hand the note to him. Old Nick just like dips, just abandons Jack. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. Like there's just that to me doesn't check out for old Nick because at the very least that, that one person is like, I'm going to call the cops and you bring Jack back to the truck and you hope that they don't get your full plate number or they're not able to track down your truck or you get back to the shed, you dump the truck. Like it feels like there were options instead of just like throwing Jack on the ground and leaving. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not siding with old Nick. I'm just saying he needs to be better. Like you kidnapped joy. Why are you ditching the scene of the, the crime? I mean, can we also just talk about his lack of peripheral vision? Because, like, <laughs> he doesn't Jack, see Jack sitting in the fucking bed. <laughs> he's just like sitting up for a while, looking at shit, just kind of <laughs> hanging out. And uh, old Nick's just like got blinders on, looking straight ahead. Uh, yeah, old Nick a- like bounces around, and that, or uh, Jack <sighs> bounces around in the back. And that's when old Nick is like, God damn it. And it's like, dude, Jack's been sitting up for 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ditching the kid is an interesting choice. Maybe you just hope people are distracted and helping the kid that they don't get your license plate. I don't know mm. what the reasoning is, but obviously it didn't work out. So my number two thing, and I'm jumping slightly ahead here, so we, we might have to backtrack for a second. But my number two thing is the cops come and we got one cop that's asking Jack a bunch of questions in the back of the police car, obviously trying to understand what's going on. The driver is just like, let's take him to child services. Like, You know, my partner, you got to stop asking questions. This guy in the driver's side needs to shut the fuck up and just let Jack recalibrate. You know, Mm -hmm. like this guy, I was literally just so annoyed at this guy where I was just like, it just doesn't seem accurate to me where he's like, oh, we just found a potentially kidnapped five-year-old. Let's just hammer him with impossible questions. And then he doesn't answer it. So let's drop him at child services. Yeah. I mean... There's shitty people in every job, including cops. So I think, uh, <laughs> he might just be really bad at his job. Like, yeah, oh, let's just do the easy fair. way out of this. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I guess he, yeah, I guess he just like didn't want to help the kid. Um, it, it was nighttime. Maybe they're cutting into his dinner time. You know, he's just like, let's get the kid out of here. Like, uh, we're going to go eat. Yeah. Real good uh, display of ACOB there. You love yeah, to see it yeah. in, in cinema. Um, okay. So, any other thoughts on? Jack's escape and like what what kind of happens no I mean I think we've covered it pretty well like I think again like nice seeing the montage leading up to it again just shows like their level of desperation and she's realizing like oh we can't be in here forever we have to try to do something and then the escape itself just there's again like it feels like they've thought of everything because we see earlier they're playing the game of him like running from the wall to wall to wall you know so she's like she's keeping him conditioned and all that kind of stuff because there is a version of the story where they don't do that. And like, he just can't stand up or he can't run or do anything like that. But like we, we saw earlier, they're like, Oh no, he's got the strength to run. So that's good. Um, They've just established the story. I thought they did that really well. Could you imagine how disorienting that must be to have never seen the world and then to end up out of the rug and then be like, wow, look at everything around me. Also, I have to run from my captor. Oh, here's a person with a dog that I've never seen in my life. Like, cannot even fathom how overstimulating no. that would be. Um, okay, so they go back. The cops go back. They find the house extremely quick, uh, which is, that's a different thing. Um, and that whole side of things with old Nick kind of just, like, dissolves, which I think is for the better of the story. But it does ultimately just just, like, come down to, like, a news segment that was, like, mm-hmm. Someone was captured in the in the kidnapping of Joy. Uh, and it's like, okay, so that was that. Um, go back to a hospital, doctor's office. This is where I think we get the most effective use of Jack's POV, uh, mm-hmm. of seeing the doctor, figuring out like what's going on. Of course, a lot of first times. Then we go back to Joy's house. William H. Macy. 
He's Joy's dad, man. I, yeah. Amazing. I texted you and I was like, William H. Macy is the goat. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fantastic. And I think he makes the most out of his limited time here on screen. For sure. He's he's great. He's What's, awful, but he's great. So, yeah. So this this is my next question, of course. So really the two scenes we get is him showing up and 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 being there initially. And then the second would be a dinner sequence um, in which he decides to turn in early for the night. Joy has problems with this and basically demands that he look at Jack and he says he can't do it and he leaves. That's it. That's the end for William H. Macy. Uh, of course, outside of him asking for a scotch from Leo, which I thought was yeah. really, really funny. Um, what, like, what's this, what's the play here? Like, what is his problem with Jack and Joy? Uh, illegitimate grandchild, you know, like mm-hmm. just not, not feeling it. Doesn't want to accept not it. Not vibing with it. Not, not into <laughs> it at all. Um, yeah, I mean, do they, I don't remember, like, do they address whether her parents got divorced? Cause it feels like that's what happened. Right. Like, and I think it's like really glossed over. I think yeah. they, they explain that like, Oh, dad lives far away now. And mom lives here with her friend, Leo. Yeah. Yeah, Which exactly. Is probably how you'd explain it to a five-year-old. That makes sense. But it's also just so interesting because you feel like the parents probably got a divorce after losing joy, Yeah, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden she comes back into it. And it's just like, does that put you into a new context of like, Oh, maybe we should have stayed together and worked through this, like all that kind of stuff. That stuff. We don't see that storyline and that's fine. But yeah, seeing William H. Macy just like not want to accept that he has a grandchild because of the way this grandchild was conceived or whatever yeah. uh, is it's, it hurts. You know what I mean? It's rough. That's a tough scene. Yeah. It's a bad beat for William H. Macy. Hope he's a better guy in real life than, yeah. than in that scene. <laughs> um, argument with mom in the living room. This is kind of like the emotional crux. I feel like of this half of the film for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, is when joy is arguing with her mom, basically about like how she's navigating and how she's supposed to be happy. She doesn't feel happy. She wonders if, the her mom's parenting technique maybe led to this happening in her mm. life. A lot of interesting moral questions at at bay here, and especially uh, in the next scene as well when Joy is interviewed um, on national television, which I I want to put a pin in and get back to in a second. I thought the argument with her mom. I, I feel like this is where Brie Larson wins her Oscar for me. Yeah, a uh, great performance. I mean, also to play off of uh, Joan Allen, who does a great job as her mom. Um, you know, wonderful performance, but both of them kind of arguing their side, their experience of what happened, you know, uh-huh. it's just like, who has it worse? Is it the person that gets captured and has to like live like that for seven years? Or is it the parent who thinks they've lost their child for the last seven years? Like, you know, don't, no, no one's got it easy by any means, but like, they also can't understand the other person's experience and they're all just trying to go through it. But yeah, it's such a, a wonderful fight between them. I want to give a quick shout out to Leo in this, uh, who's Joy's mom's uh, boyfriend, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just kind of a great guy. He's just kind of like along for the ride, has some great moments with Jack uh, yeah. towards the end of the film. Uh, let's Jack meet his dog. I, I feel like Leo does no wrong in this film. And I, yeah. I really appreciated that. Uh, Joy's interview. I mentioned I want to come back to this. She gets interviewed. Obviously, there's talk from the lawyers of like doing it from a pay for a paycheck for a payday. Uh, mm-hmm. You can kind of hear that that is the reasoning. The interviewer unhinged, absolute out of pocket questions, in my opinion. Just complete yeah. nonsense from her. Yeah, it starts out it feels like with some softballs, but then suddenly she's like. Hey, why didn't you make a smarter decision? It's like, hey, why didn't you fuck? kill yourself? <laughs> it's yeah, literally exactly. what she says. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's insane. Um, yeah, just like giving no concern for what Joy has gone through. Just uh-huh. being like, hey, I, I've been able to think about this from a different perspective. So why didn't you do this? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, and even the, to the point of, you know, calling old Nick Jack's father. You know, yep. that whole sequence I really enjoy as well. She's like. Uh, Jack is no one but my own. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm the only one that's connected to him. And then it's like, well, I mean, like, biologically, it's like, nope, like, nothing. <laughs> Shuts it down. Yeah. She's like, not, like, not in my house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, an amazing scene from Brie Larson. Yeah. I think one of the more difficult scenes to watch uh, mm. in, in the film, for sure, of her 
in lifetime having to figure that out and like struggle with that idea and that identity. Uh, and this is kind of what I was talking about, like the, the moral gray area of like, maybe, maybe she brings up a point. Like maybe that wasn't the smartest decision from joy to say like, he's mine. Like that this, I'm making decisions for us both. Like, I, I don't know. There's a lot there to play with. Um, and I don't think it's the job of the film to like investigate those, but I do think, um, it bringing it to the surface was, was important in the film. Uh, I just have two more here. Jack finding joy in the bathroom. Mm. Tough. Yeah. Brutal sequence. Joy. This comes obviously after the interview has happened. Um, joy, I assume, tried to kill herself with yeah, pills uh, by overdosing. Like. And uh, the scream that Jack lets out is pretty haunting. Dude, I, again, like I said it before, but I really thought he got nominated for this because he does not just like good child acting. Like he just does good acting. Like he's yeah. great in this film. Uh, and this is definitely one of those, those sequences. Um, it's a interesting move to like remove mom from the story for a little while. I, every time that this, like I watch this, I keep expecting her to be mad that like grandma cut his hair, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. I yeah. always just keep thinking like, Oh, it'd be like so pissed. Like, why'd you do that? But that's also one of the most like, touching moments yep. and you know whatever i don't mean to step on my true cinema moment but like it's when jack you know he's like i want to cut my hair because mom needs my strong you know because he earlier in the movie talks about samson that's how he gets his strength yeah so yeah that all like makes sense and i i just think it's a it's a beautiful moment i think there's a lot of good connective tissue for sure mm -hmm. i think the final maybe like 15 or 20 minutes of the movie I'm more hesitant to enjoy because it does feel like you mentioned taking Ma out of the equation and then like mm. having these moments with, with grandma. I, I, I think they lend something special, but I think it also detracts and maybe um, kind of like amplifies a different direction that I didn't really want the movie to go. Um, and, and I was kind of like happy with the turmoil that we yeah. were in and, and, and maybe not like seeking uh, absolution. Um, the last thing, so yeah, you mentioned Jack does get his haircut. He says, I love you, grandma, which mm -hmm. just unbelievably heartbreaking in that moment. They go back to vi visit the room. Um, obviously the house is being occupied by nobody. Uh, police have tape all over it. Evidence, uh, all the furniture is taken out of room. And this is, this is when Jack essentially gets his closure to say like, okay, that, that was that part of my life. And now I'm moving forward. I get it. Um, I don't know if it was super effective for me. I'm still, I'm like wrestling with how I feel about that because I, it just feels a little fast. It mm. feels like the movie did a really good job of like taking its time with things. And then was like, you know, we have a lot of trauma and Oh, we're going to go back to the room and resolve it right now. Um, I just, I don't know. I get it. I just don't know. I mean, it's totally fair. I, I think it works for me just because of some of the dialogue of him, you know, asking his mom, like, was it always this small? Like, yeah. You know, like it feels like smaller, but when that's all that he knew for how, like five years, you know, it seems like the, the biggest space that you could possibly imagine. And now he's been able to experience the world. It's like, Oh wait, was this place always this small? It's kind of crazy. And uh, again, the connective tissue of him being like, good morning chair. Good morning. Like we see that early oh. in the movie. And so then for him to like close it out by saying goodbye to everything, I was like, okay, this is, it's not good night. It's like, it's goodbye, you know? And like, for me, that kind of works in the story here. And then joy gets to say her goodbye and that's it. I just like, I can't imagine going back to the house. I cannot imagine what that was like for her specifically. Yeah. Just to like experience that and see what your captor, where they lived and what they were doing, you know, when they weren't in room with you. So, uh, yeah, that just could have been, should have been like just so tough. Would the cops actually let them, go back like that that seems unethical to me for the cops to be like yeah you want to go check out the room that you were held captive in for seven years sure yeah, we'll it, give seems, you tour. it seems real uh, for me more specifically is like going through the home to get there because yeah, they didn't go through the backyard they go yeah, through the house yeah that was the part that was really weird to me it's like you could have just taken them on the side yard and taken yeah. them back to the shed you know um so that that's the part that stuck out to me like why did you guys go this way to get there but uh, I don't know. I mean, I could see if everything had been cleared out. That's like, yeah, you guys can go back and look at it if you want. But yeah, the real like walking through the home thing was just strange to me. 
yeah i and i realize these are like really minuscule picking it um but i i think overall i really enjoyed the movie like i said in my letterbox review i really like the movie and i really like the score and i'll never be watching it again i don't yeah. like to i don't like to be this kind of sad like i, I just i did not enjoy that uh made me feel yucky so um true cinema you kind of already mentioned yours a little bit yeah, it's the coming to grandma to cut his hair when he asks for the scissors because he wants to give mom his strong. I love that moment. Yeah, that's really good. Um, man, it's it's tough in a movie's full of such heavy emotional moments. It feels um, undercutting to choose something that's not quite as heavily uh, mm-hmm. emotional. But I am going to choose the moment where Leo spies jack upstairs yeah. um waking up early and he does the game that you know i do with my kids of like oh i wonder if anybody would like to join me for this or where could they be or you mm-hmm. know blah, blah blah and jack ends up joining him for breakfast they start talking about his dog and later in, on in another scene they're walking leo's dog uh yeah. and i i thought that was a completely human moment and a deserved moment for jack to like have that childhood connection with an adult that is new to him, a new person that he is conversing with one on one. I think that is a really excellent scene in that fact. Um, Okay. You want to do a one X? Let's do it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, A one X Brie Larson. Of course we're going to do Brie Larson. I don't think we've done her on this pod before. Uh, The only thing it would have been for is free fire. And I don't remember what we did for that one. Um, I don't think it was Brie Larson though. I don't think it was Brie Larson. Uh, Free Fire. Cool movie. Not yeah. good, but c- cool movie. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's do Brie Larson. Room, Captain Marvel, The Marvels, Just Mercy, Lessons in Chemistry, Fast X, Unicorn Store, The Glass Castle, Kong Skull Island, Trainwreck, The Gambler, Short Torn 12, The Spectacular Now, 21 Jump Street. She's in two episodes of The League, which I just yeah. think is a remarkably underrated television show. Scott Pilgrim versus the world Greenberg and 13 going on 30. Uh, obviously as this list goes on, she has much smaller and smaller parts in those films. What are you going to choose? I think I've got to go with Scott Pilgrim. Um, Damn, her performance in there is just like so good. Uh, covering that metric song. Like, yeah, I, I, that movie's great. Like you said, it's kind of a small performance from her, but um, it's her, it's her William H. Macy moment. You know, she's going to make the most out of her, <laughs> her couple scenes in this movie. <laughs> that is a great way to put it. And I am also going with that. Uh, I know it's not great podcasting to say, I agree, uh, just roll on, but that's what I'm picking. That's a yeah. great movie. Uh, and that's a great role for her. And, um, she is gorgeous in that role. Um, really kind of the identifying factor in like, oh, I might like, uh, emo girls, you know, yeah, um, yeah. kind of a, kind of a great, a great moment for her. Okay, William H. Macy. I had to put him on the list. I know Not he's too. he's barely in this movie, and I know we could have gone any way. We could have like went with you know mother son stories or whatever. I wanted to navigate it back towards something like because Room is a very emotionally devastating film. Mm-hmm. Is William H. Macy the ultimate that guy? I mean, looking at this list, it's hard to argue with that. You know, like he's just one of the best. It really, really is. Okay, Room, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Have you seen that movie? I don't know if I have. It's the new Apes movie, the newest one. Oh, then no. I don't remember. I saw like the the first three of the sequel or the remakes okay. or whatever, but I haven't seen this one. The Caesar trilogy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Don't waste your time. It's not very good. But William H. Yeah. Macy's in it, and I don't know why. Magnolia? Wait, is William H. Macy or is he a monkey? He's he's actually William H. Macy, but he's not in a mocap suit. He's just pretending he's a monkey. Perfect. In, in, in I love real it. I love life. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Apes movie we need. We need William H. Macy pretending he's a, he's an ape. That's what we need, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Magnolia, Boogie Nights, Fargo, The Client, Above Suspicion, Mr. Holland's Opus, Ghosts of Mississippi, Air Force One, Pleasantville, the remake of Psycho, Mystery Men, the Smash Mouth All-Star music video, which I watched the first minute of, and is a direct tie-in to Mystery Men, which I thought was just unrivaled marketing about that. back yeah. in the day. State in Maine, Jurassic Park 3, uh, Seabiscuit, in enemy, in, in enemy Hands, excuse me, uh, Cellular, Sahara, Thank You for Smoking, The Lincoln Lawyer, Shameless, and Ricky Stenicki. Have you seen Ricky Stenicki? I have not seen Ricky Stenicki. What oh, is that? 
I feel like you would dig Ricky Stenicki. Really? Zach Zach Efron, John Cena, just an all out dumb as shit comedy. I had a great time with it. Uh and William H. Macy is gold in that movie. Ricky Stenicki. All right. You should cool. check it out, man. I, I liked it. I, I normally can't stand movies like that, but I was vibing. I was like, I was like probably two beers deep, and I was like, this might be the funniest movie of the year. Okay. All right. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm not review. picking it. I'm just I'm just encouraging you and others to watch that movie. <laughs> I, I feel like I know what you're picking, but what are you picking officially? It's Boogie Nights, bro. Yeah. Boogie Nights. He fucking blows his brains out on New Year's Eve. I mean, you want to talk gotta, about movie villains draft? I should have played that. That would have been good. Um, yeah, man, that's like, are we going two for two on just like, what else is the answer? You know, yeah. I think that's kind of it. Um, yeah, I think it's gotta be boogie nights. I will shout out Fargo. I fucking love Fargo. It's yep. a great movie. Um, but boogie nights gotta be the one. My wife has a dick in her ass in the driveway. I mean, come on. That's, it's just undeniable his presence yeah. in that movie. And he's only yeah. in that movie for a few scenes. Like he is of that guy, even in boogie nights, which is unbelievable. I got my boogie nights blanket. Dude, I can't believe I you have it. That. I'm so jealous. I love it. I have my roller girl tattoo, so I feel like nice. we're even. Um, yes. Okay, A24 ranking for Room. Mm. I'm going to let you go first. I went first last week for The Curse. Uh, I'm going to go with, damn, maybe an A-24. minus Wow, but okay. I'm with you where it's like... I think the first time I watched it was for myself. The second time I believe was for school. Then this was for a pod. But I do overall feel like it was one of those movies where it's just like, I don't need to watch this again. Like it's really yeah. well done. It's a great movie, but I don't need to feel this way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's, I think that's yeah. A, a minus 24. I believe. Yeah. I agree with you. It, it's a weird zone for me to be in because it's like, I think it's made well. And I, like incredibly well. I think there are some dynamite performances, a really sensational score. I think narratively it it hits on everything that it wants to. It's very effective mm-hmm. in what it's doing. I just, I don't want to feel that way. Like, I just don't want to watch that movie. Like it's just yeah. real for me. Like it could really actually um, happen and has happened. And like, that is a tough beat for me. So I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to go with a B24. I'm going to go with the B24. I think I respect it more than I like it. Um, I don't think I'll ever watch it again unless I have to for some reason or another. Um, I think the more distance I get from it, the more reverence I will probably have for it and say like, yes, that that is a good movie. Um, but just like in the moment, super, super tough to watch, which preaches to how effective it is. Yeah, no, I think uh, that totally makes sense. Um, a little, little too close to home possibly. Yeah, a little too close to home, for sure. Uh, okay, closing thoughts on Room. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I just, I hope I never have to watch this again. But <laughs> genuinely, like, thank you for recommending it. But yeah, I hope thank this you, is the Eli. last time I see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should, every year, we should watch Room. And just, like, see how we rack up, how, we, how your views change every single time you watch it. <laughs> still sad. <laughs> still, yeah, still sad movie. Um. Next week on the pod, it's going to be our first episode of August. Yeah. I feel like we have an exciting August schedule. Of course, we're going to post it on socials. So follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram mm-hmm. at 24 minutes of 824. Um, we just locked our schedule right before we recorded. Do you, yeah. you want to clue the listeners into what August has in store? Or should we keep it a surprise? Uh, we've got some new releases that we're going to be covering, which will be kind of fun. And yeah. then we are going to the opposite extremes of the A24 library for the other <laughs> stuff. So we some are. new stuff, some old stuff. Yeah, we're going old. We heard some feedback. You guys uh, like it when we cover some old stuff. So we are going to we're going to dive deep into some oldies at the end of August. Um, and then we have some new releases, guaranteed new releases that we know mm-hmm. we either have on VOD already or are going nationwide, the whole nation. So we yes. will, in fact, see them, um, which I'm really excited one of those, of course, um, being Sing Sing. Um, yes. Probably the most highly anticipated 24 movie of the year. I saw it back in March at South by Southwest. It is still in my top five of 2024. So nice. that'll clue like you in it. a little bit as to how I feel about Sing Sing. Um, it'll be fun August. A24 has got good stuff on the board. Um, closing thought, shout out William H. Macy. Love to see him. Yeah, I, I love it. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys thought about Room. 
Um, again, Eli, thank you for the recommendation. We are on Twitter, Instagram at 24 minutes of a 24. So if you have any movie recommendations, hit us up there, let us know. Um, we still got some open slots for the year and we would love to know yeah. what you guys want us to talk about. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. What? Should we do should we do a Civil War rewatch? I feel like we should do that. I bought the 4K the other day and I was just itching to rewatch it, Ben. Did you? Yeah. I okay. have it. I I am so proud that I have that movie. I think that's fantastic. I need you to <laughs> I need you to cash in that digital code so that we can rewatch it. Um, Yo, bet. Yeah, yeah you got it, man. It. Um yeah, I'd do a Civil War rewatch in a heartbeat. Um yeah, let's plan on that. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. subscribe to us on YouTube so you can see us talk about these movies. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Genuinely appreciate it. I am Ben Lawhorn. And I am Ethan Simi. Spring break forever, bitches. Bye.